All right, this next pro tip is one that I'm really excited about because it's one of the most valuable tips in the entire course. We're gonna talk about how to convert text strings into date values. In other words, we're gonna take fields that Excel recognized as straight up text and turn them into proper date values. Now, this should come as no surprise, but dates are one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging data type to work with in Excel. And the reason why it's so challenging is because date formats tend to vary considerably, not only across different regions, but even within individual regions or locales. So in the US, we might use month slash day slash year. In Europe, it might be day slash month slash year. And in other cases, you may have data coming in in totally random formats like day, day, month, month, year, 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 or some variation of that. Now, the good news is that Excel was built to understand a pretty wide range of date formats specific to your regional settings. The not so good news is that you won't always get data with dates in your regional settings. You may have to sometimes reformat or restructure dates so that Excel will understand them. Other times you might get data that's just in a totally wacky format that Excel has no choice but to format as text, like this data, for instance. Here's a quick snippet of the demo we're gonna look at in just a second. Take a look at column A. These dates are formatted year, 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 month, month, day, day. And unfortunately, that's not a format that Excel is designed to understand. So as a result, all of those values in column A are being treated as text just like the type column or the country column in B or C. But here's the thing, not all is lost if you have a case like this. What we're gonna do and what I'm gonna show you how to do is use text functions like left, mid, right, and concatenate to actually physically rearrange the pieces of that text string into a format that my version of Excel will understand. And then finally, I'm gonna wrap that function in something called a date value to actually convert the result into a proper date. And once I do that, I'll be able to use date and time functions and time intelligence to treat that date just like it would any other. So in other words, we wanna take what we have here in column A and turn it into something like this in column B, which we've labeled new date. And to do that, I'm gonna show you how to write a function like this. So it looks like a bit of a beast, but trust me, it's not that bad when we break it down. Again, we're just grabbing pieces of that text string, rearranging them, and then telling Excel, hey, this is a date, treat it as such. So to recap, common use cases, reformatting fields that Excel wasn't able to recognize as one of those common date types, or converting dates from text to date values so that you can use them for time intelligence, date time, or time series analysis. So let's jump into our Excel workbook and see if we can actually use these functions to convert a text string into a proper date. All right, so open up that Excel Pro Tip workbook. In the table of contents, you'll see the text to date conversion demo towards the bottom of the formatting tip list. This is a four star difficulty, so we're getting towards the challenging side of the spectrum. Go ahead and click link to get out to the text to date conversion tab. And what we're looking at here is shark attack data. And for those who have taken my data analysis with pivot table course, uh, you'll recognize that this was used in one of our case studies for the course. Basically, we've got records of every shark attack dating back to about 1950, whether it was provoked or not. And yes, apparently some people choose to provoke sharks uh, for some reason. Uh, what country and area it took place, what the victim was doing, the name, gender, description of the injury and a little bit morbid, but whether or not it was a fatal attack. But we don't really care about these different columns right now. Uh, for the sake of this demo, we really just wanna look at column A, which is labeled as a date column, but I have my doubts. So what we wanna do first is confirm whether or not Excel is treating these values in column A as dates or not. And so we have a few different ways we can do that. One option is to select one of the date values and use the control one shortcut to pop up our format cells dialog box. And we have two different options here. First, we can go into the general category. And if this were a proper date, what we would see here in the sample box is a date value, which would be a five digit number in this case that indicates the number of days passed 
since January 1st, 1900, which in the Excel world is the start of time. In this case, that's not what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing the exact string in the cell returned here. So that's a pretty good clue that this is not being treated as a proper date. And another option, if we try to just select one of the standard date types here, and press OK, nothing happens. Now, another way to check is to insert a new column and try to use a date function, like year, for instance, and reference that field. So the year of A2 equals a number error because A2 is not a proper date. So that kind of seals the deal. We know now for sure that these values in column A are not proper dates. These are text strings disguising themselves as dates. But not to worry, we can fix this. What we're gonna do is label this new column B, something like new date. And again, what we're gonna do here is actually physically grab pieces of this text string, the month piece, the day piece, the year piece. We're gonna force them into a format that Excel recognizes as a proper date. In my particular case, I'm gonna use the two digit month, the slash, the two digit day, the slash, and the four digit year. And to do that, I'm gonna use these text functions like left, mid, right, and ampersand or concatenate. So let's give this a shot and kind of work through it piece by piece. We'll start with the equal sign. And the first component that I need is the month. And I know that the month lives in the middle of my text string in column A. So I'm gonna use a mid function here. And my text lives right here in A2 and it starts in the fifth character because the first four are the year. And the number of characters that I wanna return are two because I want a two digit month here. Let's close it out, stop right there and just press enter, apply that down. This will be a good way to kind of spot check that it's working properly. So this should be a one for January, a two, a three, a four, five, all the way up to 12. That looks good. So I've got my month in there. Now the next piece of this formatted date that I need is the slash followed by the day. So I'm gonna manually insert that slash using the concatenate symbol and then a slash surrounded by quotes. And now I need my day. So one more ampersand. And the day is basically represented as the last two characters or the rightmost two characters from that string in column A. So you guessed it, I'm gonna use a write function there. I'm gonna say, give me some text from the right of A2, and I want two characters. Close it off, press enter. And as you can see, we're starting to get a little bit closer. January 12th, January 16th, February 18th, July 21st. So we're getting there. Next up, we need the year. So again, we need a second slash first, surrounded in quotes, ampersand. And that year is represented by the leftmost four characters. So left of A2, and we want four characters this time. Close it off, press enter, apply it down. And now this is starting to look like a real, properly formatted US style date. 112, 1950, 625, 1950, but we are not quite there yet. The last thing we need to do is take this text string, because it still really is just a text string, and wrap the whole thing in a function called date value. And when we do that, we say, all right, Excel, take a look at this date text that I've created and convert it into a value that you can understand, right? And when we apply that all the way down, take a look at that. That's looking pretty darn promising at this point. So now all that's left to do is confirm whether or not we've gotten there. We can use those same tools that I just showed you a minute ago. We can right click, format these cells, take a look at the general format, and that is a proper date value. So this is telling me that January 12th, 1950, occurred 18,275 days after January 1st, 1900, which again is the start of Excel's timeline. So that's looking good, press okay. And we can just undo, we don't actually wanna display as the uh, date value, we want to display a more appropriate or readable format. And let's just check one more time by inserting a new column. And let's try to use a function like year and reference this new field and press okay. Looks a little bit funky here. You might be wondering why it says 1905. 
That's just because this new column is formatted as a month, day, year, date style. We don't want that type of format. In this case, we just want a general or number format, and that'll turn it into something that makes a little bit more sense, like 1950, 1951, all the way down to 2015. So there you go. That's just confirmed that we have indeed successfully converted this text string in column A into a properly formatted Excel date in column B. Let's go ahead and delete that year field. And there you have it. Really great tool that can be an absolute lifesaver when you need it.